morning students in the previous class the problem of center of mass the second problem we stopped at uh, this problem that is the velocity of three particles of masses 20 grams 30 grams 50 grams or 10 i 10 j 10 k means one particle is going along the x axis second particle along the y axis other particle along the z axis centimeter per second and they are moving along the positive x y z axis respectively find the velocity of center of mass Masses are, uh, the values are given in CG system and the result also we are finding in the CG system only. Uh, velocity are given in center of mass, mass is given some grams. Gram symbol previously used to use GM, but small g is used, don't get confused with the acceleration to gravity. It is not acceleration to gravity, it is a gram unit. Next is velocity of center of mass, they ask you to find out. Velocity of center of mass is VCM equal to M1 V1 plus M2 V2 plus M3 V3 by M1 plus M2 plus M3. In this case, velocity are given in vector form, so we represent as a vector bar, so we have to take a denominator is always total the mass. So velocity of the center of mass in vector form is equals to m1 v1, m1 is 20 grams, v1 is uh, 10 i, similarly m2 v2, m2 is 30 grams, v2 is 10 j centimeter per second and m3 is 50 grams uh, velocity along the, uh, velocity of the third particle is along the z axis that is the 10 k, i j case, I am not putting the caps also, you can keep the caps, uh, even if you do not put also for i j case they are understood as unit vectors. So, you will get this as 200, 300 and 500 by 20 plus 30, 50 plus 50 is 100, 0, 0, 100 cancels, the result is 2 i plus 3 j plus 5 k by 100 cancels, no, centimeter per second. This is in vector form result. But if you want to calculate the magnitude of this resultant velocity of center of mass, V is equal to V x square. This formula you do not have to write, directly you can go for this relation. Bar, if, if, you can simply write V c m without bar indicating magnitude or you can put modulus for a vector that also indicates a magnitude. We say magnitude equal to Vx square. This one writing is not compulsory. You can go directly for this formula. X component is 2, Y component is 3, Z component is 5 units of center of mass, uh, velocity of center of mass in CG system. So Vx square plus Vy square plus Vz square means 2 square plus 3 square plus 5 square is a 4 plus 9 plus 25, 13 plus 25 is 38, root 38 is approximately 6.16 centimeter per second. This is a magnitude of velocity of center of mass. Next third problem. Problem number three, masses, four kg, comma, one kg are separated by, by one meter. Point the location of center of mass from four kg mass. We are not given. We are not given where the objects are kept. So it is your choice. You can keep an x, x, y, x. It doesn't matter. Center of mass does not depend on coordinate system. It only depends on the masses and the distribution. So. Beneath is your choice. They are not given the coordinates where 4 kg is kept, where 1 kg is kept. No. Then you better take uh, what are the mass they ask from 4 kg. Keep that at the origin. Is the x axis for simplicity. And keep the first object from which you are finding the distance. That is m1 equal to 4 kg. And m2 is equal to 1 kg. Center of mass is close to larger mass. So, center of, what is the advantage of taking the first object in the origin is its coordinate become equal to easy, the formula becomes more simplified. So, x1 is 0, y1 is also 0 and this is going to be, this separation is r, r itself is equals to x2, the distance of the second object from original means from the first object that is x2, x2 is equals to 1 meter it is given for us. The center of mass is close to larger mass somewhere here, this is going to be xcm way to find out. Answer m1 equal to 4 kg 
a m 2 is equals to 1 kg. Let m 1 is at origin. m 1 comma m 2 or on x axis with the m 1 equal to 4 kg at origin. Then x 1 becomes equal to 0 and x 2 becomes equal to the r separation that is nothing but equal to distance between the 2 x 2 equal to r is equals to 1 meter that itself is separation of the 2 objects it becomes then x coordinate of center of mass position of center of mass is x c m from origin only taken but m 1 is at origin. So, from m 1 is x c m equal to m 1 x 1 plus m 2 x 2 by m 1 plus m 2, but x 1 is 0 therefore, this becomes equal to m 1 is 4 kg into 0 plus m 2 is 1 kg into x 2 is 1 meter by m 1 plus m 2 is 4 plus uh, 1 which is equals to 1 by 5 meters. That means, x m is equals to is equals to 0.2 meters or 20 centimeters from m 1. So, this is going to be 0.2 meters. So, remaining how much it will be this is 1 meter means remaining will be 0.8 meters. If they ask you from 1 kg you can also take this as the origin and this one at some distance equal to x 2 equal to 1 meter that you will get the x m from m 1 yeah, this 1 kg is be 80 centimeters or 0.8 meters you will get. More example problems I will give you as assignment later. The one two more points we need to discuss about the center of mass important for the numericals also. In case if you are lifting any object from the ground, which point of the object you need to consider for the work done? We have taken one object of length L. Where is mass of center of mass center of mass of the object located at its center? At its center, geometric center. I am lifting it. When you are lifting it vertically or horizontally, then which point of the object you are lifting you have to consider is the center of mass only. I am lifting this object to the some other position. You can lift it vertically, you can lift it horizontally. The height lifted you have to count. So, one bottom end point is lifted by different height, top end is lifted at a different height. So, which point of this object you have to consider for a work done to lift? Work done is equals to change in potential energy equal to mgh, you will get in gravitation. So, which part, which point you have to consider for the work done is nothing but equal to mgh, this h is nothing but equal to height of center of mass, not bottom end, not top end lifting any object is equals to lifting its center of mass. So, if you take any extended bodies lifting objects work done is always considered to the m g h and height what you are considering is the position of the center of mass from the initial point or from the point where it is lifted. In case if you are taking this rod cylindrical rod okay, radius is r mass is m this is going to be h 1 h 1 is equals to radius initially. So, initial potential energy is nothing but equal to m g h 1. Later you made it uh, vertical on the ground. What is the work done to make it vertical? It was like this, you made it vertical like this. So, you can think this, make it vertical like this. So, center of mass is now here. This is nothing but equal to h 2. Same mass, center of mass highly lifted up. Top end lifted, bottom lifted, do not take. This is lifted 0 height, this lifted to the maximum height is equal to L. That is the length of the object but do not consider that, you have to consider the center of mass lifting only. What is the work done is equals to this case potential energy 2 equal to m g h 2. Work done is nothing but equal to in this case change in potential energy. So, work done is nothing but equal to m g h 2 minus m g h 1. What is h 2 equal to? If it is a symmetrical body, h 2 is nothing but equal to total length is L. So, h 2 will be equal to L by 2. So, this is going to be L by 2 minus m g h 1. H 1 is nothing but equal to radius. So, m g taken out common it becomes equal to radius is a work done to make that uh, cylindrical rod vertical on the ground. In case if you are filling the tank water tank on the ground what is the work done to lift the water to fill this into the tank 
the height is h volume uh, length breadth height you have to consider the volume of this uh, water for example water only will be given to you density of the water equal to mass by volume mass becomes equal to mass equal to volume of the water into density of the water work done is nothing but equal to mgh but which height you have to consider here is the height of this tank water tank is h then don't take h for this case you have to take height of center of mass height of center of mass is half of this height is equals total height by 2 is the location of center of mass even the water is filled up to this level don't consider this because here what done for this water is 0 for this what done is maximum average height you have to consider that is nothing but equal to h by 2. Next is the center of mass always has a linear part, linear motion. In case if you take any rods or irregular object or big object, if you throw it into the air, it is going up and down. It is going up and down and it may be spinning or rotating at different axis or different points. But one point in the object, when you are throwing the object upwards, the object may rotate or spin. But one point in this object is actually moving up and down just along the straight end path that is supposed to be center of mass. Every other points may rotate around the center of mass, but center of mass is a point, imaginary point inside the object, it can be outside also, that depending on the shape of the objects. And this center of mass will, will have a linear path, that point is important, center of mass has linear motion or linear path. Different points of the object may have the different uh, paths like rotation and uh, uh, vibrations like that, but center of mass has a linear path. If the person is jumping into the swimming pool from some height at some angle is taking and jumping into the swimming pool he is diving by folding the body in this case the body the person when he folds the body he rotates but rotates and but center of mass of the person is the one which is taking the parabolic path so if i take any extended bodies projected into the air as a projectile, not a particle but an extended bodies, the object may rotate, but the one point in that object uh, will have the linear motion that is nothing but uh, the center of mass. The person when he is depending on the folding of the body, uh, body parts, the center of mass may a little go outside also, when you extend the body like this, the center of mass may be here, but it will be, it will be within the boundary of the object persons. It may rotate and uh, spin, but center of mass will have the linear path, uh, that is the one which is taking the parabolic path. Okay, we will stop the problems related to center of mass. Next, we will discuss uh, rotational motion and rotational dynamics together. And types of motions, we have different type of the motions. Precision, we will discuss that at the end. linear motion, circular motion, this is we are doing it as a rotating motion, rotation can be need not be circular path, but we generally discuss about this circular motion. Circular motion, elliptical motion also there, but I am not going to discuss that, simple harmonic motion. precision, linear motion, I will go take it as a translatory motion. What is translatory motion means? Linear means a straight line path, of course, or just not rotating or vibrating. And vibration motion also we can take, vibration motion related to the simple harmonic motion. In the linear motion, how the objects move, or we take it as a translatory motion. All points of object have 
same velocity. Careful with this velocity. Velocity has both magnitude and direction means uh, it has the same magnitude and uh, same direction it means. For example, if I take uh, the rods moving like this, so velocity is b. Whatever the every other particles are in the object, uh, all of them are having the same velocities. And one more motion we to discuss is rolling motion. At the end of this topic, we will get this rolling motion. In the case of translative motion, all points of the object have the same velocity and move parallel to each. Move parallel to each other. All points of object have same velocity and move parallel to each other. That is related to translative motion. If the bus is moving with some velocity of 40 km per hour, every object in the bus are also moving the same velocity. Every point on the bus also having the same velocity in the same direction also parallel to each other. That is related to translative motion. Next is rotational motion. In the case of the rotational motion, uh, part of the rotational motion we discuss is a uh, circular motion. Circular motion is one kind of the rotational motions. What happens in the case of the rotational motion? In the case of rotational motion, any object which is moving, it moves around a fixed point. Object moves around the fixed point. The fixed point is called as the center of, of this uh, rotational motion. And velocity of the particle which is moving in the, which is in rotatory motion is always perpendicular to the distance from the center to the object. And we call that as a radius. If radius value is constant, then it becomes circular motion. If the value, radius value may not be constant, then that is going to be electrical path like uh, planets moving around the sun or uh, electrons revolving around the nucleus. In the ellipse, there are the two center points called as a foci. So two center points are there and the planets revolve around the sun in keeping the sun at one of the foci points. But now all the planets are having the same foci point here and rotate around the sun. I'll take here, this is the sun and these are the planets. But the distance from the planet to the sun is not constant. That means radius is not constant. We take the average radius. So this is a R1, this is called as a R2. The farthest distance from the sun happens in the winter season for the earth and this is called as a apogee or aphelion. Apogee means farthest distance in the ellipse and for the sun, helium means sun, we call it as a aphelion. Farthest distance, the distance is R A or R1. When the sun, earth planet comes very close to the sun, like earth coming very close to the sun, we, it's a summer season. In that case, the distance, the point P is called as a perigee, P-E-R-I-G-E-E. -E. For the sun specifically, it's also called as a perihelion and RP. What is the average radius? We cannot apply the equations of the centripetal force applying the gravitational force, keeping the object moving in circular path, making it as a centripetal force. And for that we require the circular motion application, then we take the average radius. The average radius is nothing but equal to the maximum distance uh, plus minimum distance by 2. This is the average radius that is equal to the distance we call as a astronomical unit. Average distance between sun and earth is called as astronomical unit for, other, for the earth case only. And that we will discuss again later. So this is the elliptical motion. Elliptical motion is also rotational motion. Circular motion also rotating motion. What is the difference is the distance between the center to the rotating object is constant means that is called as a circular motion. If it is not constant, it is called as a, it, it can be any rotational motion. It need not be circular ellipse, it can be any other path. One object you take and there is a road like this, one bus is moving like this around it. This is also rotation motion only. The distance is not constant from center to the rotating object. Next we discuss is the circular motion. Okay. And in details we have to discuss, but before that we will go for exam other points. Simple harmonic motion. What is simple harmonic motion? It is called as a short form SHM, simple harmonic motion. It is simple to analyze, so simple harmonic motion. Harmonic means uh, periodic. Anything that is pleasant to hear sounds called as a harmonic sounds. And anything that is repeated sounds uh, after same time period, after same time interval, they are called as a periodic. They are supposed to be harmonic. 
but uh, here simple harmonic uh, motion the object moves to and fro it does not go away in one direction it just moves to and fro about the fixed point center point that is called as the main point that is starting point and then end points are called as the extreme points as it moves between two and fro the kinetic energy converted into potential energy and vice versa at the extreme point velocity is zero at the mean point velocity is maximum like simple pendulum oscillating to and fro or loaded spring spring with load if means load means a weight or mass here in this case the spring suspended with the load pull the load down and leave it it oscillates up and down that is also simple harmonic motion condition for simple harmonic motion is that the force acting on the object is proportional to negative of the displacement displacement position is always measured away from the center compulsorily in this direction only wherever the particle particle may be going away or coming towards also the from the mean point you have to measure the distance away from it away from the center as a vector form and force is always acting towards the center trying to pull it back to the mean point center point so that opposite direction is indicated by negative sign that the force is called as a restoring force trying to pull the, put the object back into the initial position if you pull it down or up goes up and down the displacement is up and down but the force is always uh, towards the mean point that is indicated by negative sign in this case that is related to simple harmonic uh, motion to and fro motion about the mean point such that the force is proportional to negative the displacement is called as a simple harmonic motion now that is not required in this topic next is precision what is this precision is if you take the top 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 this top cannot stand on the tip when it is not spinning if we make it try to stand on the tip it will fall but when it is spinning only it stands when it is spinning it stands on the tip able to stand on the tip but uh, it won't if it is uh, spinning about its axis as the spinning speed decreases speed decreases uh, what happens is it starts uh, rotating around the vertical and passing through the tip like this it is uh, spinning like this means it will go around it the top spins and rotates about this vertical axis this vertical axis passing through the tip this rotation the spinning top rotating about the vertical axis passing through the tip fixed tip that point this line is fixed this is called as a precision precision is nothing but projection just like projection it is rotating around it but rotating spinning about its own axis also and again rotating like this if this speed of spinning decreases uh, the rotation speed increases that is due to the reason called as a conservation of angular momentum which is going to discuss at the end of this topic one thing other thing is that the top is stable only while spinning that is due to the property called as the moment of inertia that also we are going to discuss in this topic only this is precision precision there are two type of precision spellings you have to be careful you have to if you take a p r e c i s i o n the precision this is nothing but related to the accuracy that is related to the least count of the instruments like a screw gauge or any caliper so this is the least count we say more precision of the instrument that precision related to the accuracy of the instruments are readings taken p r e c i s i o n this is a p r e c e s s i o n precision is related to the rotational motion we are going to discuss this precision one is translatory motion already i have discussed it next we we'll discuss this circular motion and the rotational motion now we we'll discuss in this precision rotation of axis of spinning top around the vertical line or it is also we can call it as a vertical axis passing through the tip tip rotation of axis of spinning top around the vertical line passing through the tip is called as precision of top diagram they don't ask for only definition they will ask for one more question i 
I will show the experiment related to the precision later. You better take the point on the, which point of the object, the stop I have to take for the precision is, this is the spinning axis. This is the center of mass of the top we will take. This is the center of mass. Every point, instead of taking every point spins, but uh, you better take a center of mass. Center of mass is having the precision around the vertical axis. This is a hip. This is a vertical line or axis through tip. This is a tip of the top. So it will be spinning and rotating around this axis. This is called as a precision path. Diagram they don't ask. Vertical line through the tip of the top. Next to it, we'll discuss uh, rotational motion. In this rotational motion, object moves around a fixed point called as a center of the path. Uh, and uh, imagine a line passing through this center point. So if you take this circular motion, for example, the object is moving around this fixed point. That is called as center of the circle and the distance from center of the circle to the given object is called as a radius. Radius always we take it as a vector and it is always directed away from, away from center compulsorily away from center and the velocity is along a tangent to the circular path and tangent is always perpendicular to radius and it is rotating around this axis. This is called as the axis of rotation. What is axis is imaginary line passing through the center of the circle and perpendicular to the plane of rotation. Plane of rotation. If the object is rotating on this board for example. The center will be here. The radius is like this. Velocity is in the direction, vector. And at any point, instantaneous velocity will take along a tangent. And axis is the line, imaginary line passing through the center and perpendicular to the plane of rotation. Plane is the surface. On this surface, the object is rotating. So the axis is like this. This is called as the axis. Axis is the imaginary line passing through the center of a circle and perpendicular to the plane of rotation. We are going to discuss now in this rotational motion, circular motion. Next class, we are going to cover this. Up to now, the time is up for this session.